Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at a tool that I've used in the past. I don't use it as much anymore, um, but in the last week or two, I've been talking with students about getting their students. So these are pre-serviced classroom teachers. They're studying elementary and uh, early childhood ed uh, environments, and they're figuring, they're trying to figure out ways to embed uh, online reading comprehension into their classroom. And so in the past, what we would often do is we would say, okay, as a classroom teacher in early childhood or elementary, you know, what I would normally do, some teachers will not include the internet or not allow students to get online and search. Um, some teachers will um, blindly give a student a, a Chromebook or a laptop and say, here, go to this website and trust that the student will find the website. We'll be able to search for and find the website or know how to type in the URL for the website. And then other classroom teachers, one of the things I've seen in the past is we'll give students a list of hyperlinks or a hot list, you know, and say, here's the approved sites, go search within that. Um, the challenge with that is that a lot of times in any one of those, we're not building up the critical skills needed in online reading comprehension. So online reading comprehension is all about questioning, locating, evaluating, synthesizing, and communicating. So we're not really teaching students how to get in and question and locate within search engine results or within a web page. We're not teaching students how to evaluate what links they want to click on. So one of the tools I've used in the past is Google Custom Search Engine, sometimes called CSE. Um, it's a, a, a powerful tool. Um, the reason why I like it is you are effectively creating a, a sandbox on the internet. So imagine you're having your students search and sift online informational text, and you're basically like setting up a little sandbox for them to play within. Um, and you are putting certain websites in there that they can look you know in those websites and look at the information and then at the same time you're also leaving a lot of websites out things that you don't want them to take a look at so google custom search engine will do this it'll set up that little sandbox um, and it will one of the other things i like is it will make it for the most part look like google um, and so we're building up that skill set yes there are plenty of other search tools out there um, but this is one of the ones that most students are using uh, this is especially in chromebook environments this is one of the ones that's coming for the most part baked into chrome and that and that url bar so a lot of our students are just automatically for better or worse hitting google um, and also it's a, a a great free tool so what will happen is you can go in and create a new search engine but I want to give you a tour of one that I've created and used in the past. And this is one on the 50 states. I was working with a second grade classroom and we were trying to figure out more authentic ways to embed uh, these digital literacies and these web literacies into instruction. And so we had a group of second graders, a class of second graders, and they were paired up and each student had a state that they were focusing on. So you'd have a pair of students that was focusing on Connecticut, a pair that was focusing on uh, South Carolina, a pair focusing on Wyoming. The students would go to the library, find information and resources. They would go online and find information and resources. And they would collect all of these materials in a Google Doc or a blog, but they, they you know, capture all of these materials and synthesize it into a wiki page on the class website. So then you'd have this class website that is one page for each of the 50 states. Uh, this is information that's been collected and created by students in the classroom. So future students in this second grade classroom can go back and say, okay, well, I want to get a better understanding of Rhode Island. And they can go back and look at materials that have already been synthesized by previous students so it's already written at their level and they can go back at a later date and critique revise synthesize use that information um, and, and build their own knowledge so they would take this information um, and the 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 online reading part of this is when we had them search online we were a bit concerned about just letting them loose on google itself um, or or having them go to a browser and say have fun just go search um, our school librarian also suggested that we use a database we did integrate the database as well the challenge is that we also wanted them to build up those critical online reading comprehension skills and not just have materials that have already been properly vetted for them so we wanted to have a little bit of 
uh, ambiguity and and perhaps uh, less than credible materials and resources that students would encounter. So if I go into this, I have setup, look up and feel, uh, look and feel. Sorry, search features, statistics and logs. Under basics, uh, under setup, I basically have the search engine name. So this is the 50 states. We gave it a description. We left keywords out. This is basically keywords to identify our search engine. We didn't need this or want it. Um, our edition is listed as free with ads. Um, this may be problematic for you. Um, we wanted it with the ads. We like uh, we we liked it with the ads primarily because we wanted to teach our students that they should, uh, you know, uh, scroll past and ignore those ads and get to the information. So that was a good teaching point for us. Um, other details that are there, I can get the embed code, the public URL. We'll come back to this. Do you want students to be able to in image search on this? For this, we said no. Uh, speech input, do you want them to talk to the browser or to the search engine? We said no. Um, what language do you prefer? We pretty much left this alone at English. Um, and then down here, you'll notice that we have sites to search. So I can add in here different websites that I want the students to be able to search from. So you can include the entire web, but emphasize included sites so they can do a search. It'll search through Google, but it will pref privilege these websites and put them at the top or only search those included sites. Because we had a second grade population, we said only those sites. Um, and so what this would do is you would open up a new tab and you'd say, um, you know, 50 states for elementary, if I could type, 50 states for elementary students and say, okay, well, um, this Nat Geo for Kids site looks like a good resource, okay? Obviously, I would go through and skim and scan and make sure it really is high quality. There's nothing questionable. Um, I'm going to copy this, something I normally would not do uh, in my classroom. I'm going to hit Add, include sites individually, so I'm going to hit Paste, and then I'm going to say include all pages whose address contains this URL. So this initial front end of the URL, everything underneath of it. Um, and then there's other opportunities if you wanted to, to look at only certain pages. So if you, if you have like one page or a couple pages within a website, it's far better just to grab those couple pages as opposed to grabbing everything. So if you're looking at a larger site like NewYorkTimes.com or the Wall Street Journal or U.S. News, you might want to grab individual pages as opposed to the whole website. So now I have five websites that are listed in here. Um, I can go through and, and add extra materials. But for this, I like to keep it simple because I want to know what my students are seeing as they get online. Um, you can restrict pages using this typography. I don't do that. I want to keep it as simple as possible so I know what students are going to see. Um, I can go into, I'm going to ignore the make money. We'll click just so you can see. So I can add, put ads on this and make money. I can be the, uh, add some more administrative users. I keep it simple. Um, more things tends to break in my experience. Under look and feel, I can figure out how do I want this thing to lay out. Uh, I select full width because I want to see this. I want it to look just like or as close to Google as possible. And over here on the right, I can see the whole time what this ultimately will look like. So as an example, I could say, you know, South Carolina, hit search, and now my screen is a bit wider right now because of, I have it blown up for the video, but this is a little bit wider, and in the full uh, layout, the link and the embed code, um, this looks much nicer. But you'll see it gives you a search box, the amount of results in the time, you have ads up top, and then you start to get into some of the websites that we added in, okay? So you can constantly go in and double check and see what things look like. So web search, how do you want the layout to look? I can save this. I already had it saved there. Save and get the code. Um, if you have students using mobile devices, you might want to use the compact form. I didn't think that it was really necessary for our usage. Um, under themes, I can change the look a little bit. Um, I prefer, you know, the as close as possible to what Google will give us primarily because I want my students to think they are in Google. Um, I can also, I'll save that. I can customize it. 
a little bit. Once again, I like to keep it as simple as possible. Um, you know, I want to this layout. I want to have it look just like Google. So I'm going to leave it the way that it is. Um, do I want thumbnails in my search? I have it on for right now. Um, you can turn that on and off, at, at, you know, depending on what your needs and, and your usage is. Um, I can have promotions inside. I can have autocomplete. I don't want to. Um, and then you can also look in statistics and logs so I can go in and see how often my students are actually using this. Um, but let's get into it. And I can go into uh, where is it? All right, so down here, I can save it and get the code. So here's my embed code. So what I can do is, the nice thing is here, um, I recommend that all teachers have their own website. I think that all teachers should have their own website. It should be their digital portfolio. They should be able to blog from it and reflect. Um, they should have one canonical address where they save teaching and learning materials, but also their reflections over time. Um, the reason in this example is, you know, I would say that you take this embed code, you have a section on uh, your website that is this unit, you embed this search engine in the unit. That way your students always know, go to my website. Everything that's on my website, I put there. Everything that's on my website, I have approved. If this search engine is embedded in your website, then they basically go in um, and you see listed on the website, um, what this whole thing looks like. So if you're walking around the classroom and a student is on a different website and then you say, why are you there? And they give you some excuse that, oh, like I, I got lost or I was supposed to be there. No, you're supposed to be on my website. My All of my materials are embedded on my website. Um, but if you don't have um, your own website, what you can do is you can basically send a link out. Um, for this. So if I go in, we saw different places, but if I hit public URL, I can grab this. And this is what the live version will look like. So the live version, the public URL, I'm still going to have this Google, I'm going to be able to search all of Google custom search engine. So this could be problematic where I search South Carolina, no results. Okay, so there's nothing in there. So that's good. So if I search South Carolina here, now this is the search engine that I built up. So as I have students working online, I see I have 73 results out of five websites. This is how much time I spent on this. I have a couple ads in here. I'm teaching my students to ignore the ads. And then down here, I'm saying, here's the the information I want you to search and sift through these links and figure out what links you need to help you out. So we're working on building keywords, reframing keywords, locating, you know, within search engine results, what, what information I need. Does this information suit my problem? Do I have all of the information? And if not, then restructure my, you know, search terms, my keywords. Um, so this is Google Custom Search Engine. If I were to uh, start with this, um, typically what we would see is the teacher will start with this and they will begin by adding in um, search engine links. Constantly, uh, you know, take a look at what your students, keep an eye on what they're doing. Um, make sure that your students are in the safe place. Uh, they're in the right place at the right time. Um, don't assume that things are just going to work because they never do. Um, but then another thing that you can do as you uh, continue to use this is after a year or two of using this, what we would do is we would start the unit and have students search within this. And then maybe some of your uh, like a secondary uh, class on on searching or more skilled students, you would say, OK, I want you to go find for me a website that we could use in the search engine. So you have students search online and they look for websites they evaluate a website they evaluate a web page and they think about the purpose and the audience and the design of the page and you ask your students second graders fourth graders seventh graders high school students you ask them is this a quality website and is this something that could be used by your peers and then as you find better websites to add you take their stuff and you add it into the google uh, custom search engine for future students to use 
So once again, this is Google Custom Search Engine, um, Google CSE. I've used it a lot in the past. I don't use it as much anymore, um, but I think it's a valuable tool if you're in early childhood ed, if you are in um, you know, elementary classrooms. It's a good way to create a little internet sandbox for your students to search within. Um, it's also a way to, if you wanted to create like a little custom search engine on your own website and you wanted to have parents uh, search within websites that you deem uh, credible and relevant for whatever topic, it's something you might build up for them. So let's say you're a special ed teacher and you want to share other websites and other resources, but you don't want to sit there and hand pick the resources. You might say, hey, I added some of my top special ed websites to this Google custom search engine and I embedded it on my website for you to check out. A lot of different uses um, and then also you know this is a product from Google so it is free but there's ads baked in but a lot of this stuff you can build on your own um, in, in a very low-key sort of hacky way um, but that's another video for another day once again uh, Google custom search engine uh, if you like the video if it helped you out please by all means uh, click that subscribe button you can also find out a lot of my other work uh, and materials over on my website at wioburn.com uh, a lot of my blog posts and most of my materials are there some of the content that I don't share over on my YouTube channel is there I'm making more of a connection between the two and last but not least if you haven't already uh, please subscribe to my uh, weekly newsletter, Too Long Didn't Read. It's all about education, technology, literacy, and it takes a lot of these components that we're talking about and tries to connect the dots um, in a space that often isn't that easy to connect the dots. So be sure that you subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the newsletter so that we can stay in touch, and have a great rest of the day.